Okay, so you're gonna start with, like you have your bolster or pillow and then a block underneath it or another pillow underneath it. So it's like kind of like a T. We are gonna do a yoga nidra. I am recording this so you can always go back to it. But I just want you to cocoon yourself, essentially just cocoon yourself. And you're gonna make sure you lengthen your spine. Mm. You can start with the legs straight just so that you can have a nice little neutral position. So cocooning yourself and breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And you're in a nice chest opening. We're in the season of autumn. Ah, oh, it is the lungs and the colon. But let's be realistic in the fact that it's always, yeah, every day we have to honor our lungs and our colon. Yep, think about it's a good time to like oh, purge <laughs> and let our mind bodies just release stuff. So here we are. You want to make sure that you feel comfortable and close the eyes legs are straight chin is up palms are up find the breath in through the nose and out through the nose Observing if you have any tension in your jaw. So yoga nidra is very much about just decompressing, relaxing the body. All of our practices, breath awareness. The pace of the breath, the quality of the breath, how full and robust are your inhales as you Fill up your lungs. Remember, a lot of times people say breathe into the belly. Don't breathe into your belly. Don't do that. You've got three-part breathing. So diaphragm on your inhale. Remember, the diaphragm moves down. And the diaphragm is awakened because of the phrenic nerve. P-H-R-E-N-I-C. P-H-R-E-N-I-C. Phrenic nerve that originates in the neck area, cervical spine. Uh, we have seven vertebrae in the cervical spine, so it's between three and five. And so that diaphragm is activated because of that phrenic nerve. And think that if your neck is compressing, one, two, three, four, five. Your diaphragm is not going to work the way that it needs to for you to survive happiness. To welcome happiness into your life. So make sure that your neck feels long. If it doesn't feel long, you can always pick your head up for a moment with your hands. Yeah, you'll have to do an ab crunch to make that happen and then kind of pull your neck. And then you really want to bring your chin up so that way you have a nice little curve on that cervical spine. You can bring your hand underneath and just check to see that you have that curve under the cervical spine. The chin is tilted up. And then the diaphragm is saying, hola. And the nerve is saying to the diaphragm, hola.
And then thoracic breathing. The thoracic, thoracic cavity is just inflating and deflating. The beginning of every practice, we really arrive to ourselves. Check with your spirit. How's your spirit doing these days? Up or down? Just a simple up or down. Physical body. This is wonderful for the back. As I mentioned earlier, great for the lungs. Clavicular breathing is when your collarbones rise and your neck shortens. Three part breathing. As you're here, attention onto your jaw and check to see that your chin is up to the sky and that your jaw is soft. We have five bodies and that spirit body. So it's hanging out and just connecting with other beings in this world. And when you encounter other people, do you find that your body retracts or do you find, oh, we got good energy. And so if you look at today and your encounters today, are you like, ooh, oh, ooh, oh, oh, oh. What, what were your, your, what was your spiritual body like encountering other spirits? Someone rub you the wrong way, you can be like, oh, I don't know. And then think about why don't you know about yourself? And when we look at our physical body here, that vessel, we want to make sure that there is no dams, no blockages between your spirit body and your physical body that carries you through life. So if we're clenching the jaw, naturally we're going to clench the butt cheeks. And it might not be an obvious clench. It might be like a deep clench because you're not using the butt cheeks right now, you're just gonna relax them. So you're gonna fill up the diaphragm or the lower lungs and then the mid lungs and the upper lungs and then on your exhale, draw your belly button down towards the ground or the bolster, exhaling slowly, emptying the lungs. Inhale, lower, mid, upper. Exhale, belly button in, and upward flying of energy. So the core working pushes the diaphragm up, the diaphragm is relaxed on the exhale and you're expelling the stress 
out of the nose. What does stress look like for you? Breathe in, lower, mid, upper. Exhaling, diaphragm relaxes, core engages. Empty the body. Inhaling, lower, mid, upper. Slow exhale, very intentional, cleansing breath. Inhaling lower, mid, upper. Slow, intentional exhale. Now, bringing your awareness to your legs, what I want you to do is you're gonna bend your knees and then let your knees fall out to the sides. So nice hip opening here. This means that you're gonna actually arc your lower back a little bit more. So if you need to adjust and if it's too much, you can always put either another pillow or block underneath you, but make sure that you are comfortable. Hmm, feeling that nice stretch on the inner thighs. This is a, a great pose to figure out, are you clenching your butt cheeks? Because as a passive practice, at this moment, you don't really want to clench them. So if you are, just relax them. And if you're not sure how to do that, just clench them a little bit more and then tell them to relax. And then you'll kind of find out whether or not they have a tendency to start to like Clench up a little more. And then you recognize. And then you say, it's all good. It's all good to your six butt cheeks. <laughs> Gluteus maximus on each side. Medius and minimus. Let the arms rest wherever they need to rest. Pick the head up. You're going to turn the head over to the left. Getting a nice stretch on the neck. Take that right arm, reach it out to the right. That way your chest muscle opens up. You really want to think about rolling the shoulder back and then allowing gravity to do its thing here. Slow breath in, slow breath out. I want you to think about breathing into the, the right side of the neck. So the muscles on the right side of the neck. Opening up that pathway. See if your spirit body can soften. What about your thoughts? What are the thoughts running through your head? Observe them. Without attachment. If the muscles on the right side of the chest are tight. Give them permission to soften. Tell them, it's okay. It's okay, pectoral muscles. You don't need to hold on or grip onto anything at the moment. And keeping the jaw soft.
So your spirit body softens. You're watching your thought body. Out attachment. And then you're going to take another nice breath in. Come right to center with the head. You can lower that right arm. And then pick your head up. Actually, stay at center. And just observe, observe the spine. Observe the muscles on the right side of the neck and the left side of the neck. Just observe. And then pick the head up, turn your head over to the right, and then take your left arm and extend the left arm out. Here you're stretching the muscles on the left side of the neck, the left pectoral muscles. Remember your pectoral minor goes from behind the nipple to the front part of your shoulder actually the front part of your shoulder blade. And so you might feel a good stretch here. Good. Give the body permission to soften here. Still observing, what do you feel in the inner thighs? Are you tensing up anywhere? And then we're going to breathe in and breathe out. Bring your head right back to center. Take another good breath. Exhaling at center, observing what you feel here. And then you're going to slide the legs straight. So breathe in one Leg straightens. Don't bring your knees to center. Just straighten, sliding that right leg forward. And then using the next out breath, straighten your left leg. Ah, and then just kind of shake the legs here. Mm. And breathe. Three-part breathing. Lower, mid, upper. Exhaling, belly button falls into the spine. We're going to bend those knees again. You're going to drop your knees over to the right side into a little fetal position so you can roll yourself off of your bolster for a moment. Staying with the breath always, watching that thought body. And then you're going to use your hand to press into the earth and push yourself up to an easy seated position. Now, I want you to actually use the roller or the foam uh, or the bolster to sit on. Yeah, so you're going to put this right underneath your boot. And then you're going to take a seat. And that's going to give you the ability to kind of like feel like you're going to fall forward. You can also sit on a block and then put a pillow on top of it. Hmm. Once you're here, go ahead and loosen up your shoulders. Hmm. Today is about 
comprehending to transcending and transcending is when we get things on a cellular level and we're like oh yeah that makes sense right and then we figured it out <laughs> so loosen up your shoulders inhale and exhale when you inhale your collarbones are going to rise up and then exhale collarbones rise up and exhale collarbones rise up bend exhale keep going big circles here breathing in and breathing out hmm. okay you're going to take your right hand down to the floor and your left arm up and over really great side bend take another good breath in go ahead and release and go to the other side so we're starting off a little bit of yoga nidra we're moving into a little bit of happy movement here extend that energy ah Breathing in and breathing out. Mm. And then go ahead and release. Bring your hands behind you. Opening up your chest. Staying with the breath, softening the muscles on the front body. And then Go ahead and release. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and plant your feet down onto the floor. Then we'll go ahead and widen the distance and you're gonna fold here. Malasana. You're gonna stretch out your lower back. You are working your hip flexors. Swaying from side to side and breathing. You are working your TFL, which are the muscles just on the uh, front outside that help you to flex, but they're helping you right now to bring your knees out. I want you to keep your belly button into your spine. We are on that season, not just of the lungs, but of the large intestine. So this is a really great pose, but again, keep the belly button in to help move the bowels, help the body to release stuff. Nice deep fold. Tuck the chin into the chest. And then we're going to very slowly work our way up, shoulders up, back and down. We'll bring our feet in. You're going to take your left foot and bring it underneath your right. And then bring that right leg in and then hug. Hug and twist your torso to the right. Nice spinal rotation. 
freeing out the body of stresses and also helping for the production of serotonin happens in the gut. Take another good breath in on your exhale. Go ahead and release. Let's switch. Bring your opposite leg behind the top leg and hugging and twisting over to the left. Keep the spine long. Feeling this nice stretch into the neck. Remember to decompress that phrenic nerve for the diaphragm. Allow for that three-part breathing. Inhaling and exhaling. And then go ahead and release. You're gonna cross the legs one more time. I want you to loosen up your neck. Now, if you hear like a mortar and pestle like of the neck, then you have to lengthen more. Yeah, because if not, then you're just kind of crushing. Yeah, and if we have arthritis, we think we're breaking up arthritis. We're breaking up any debris, we're breaking up scar tissue i know i'm breaking up scar tissue and then scar tissue says hi i want to be back here again and i say no i don't think so yep, so talk to your body keep those shoulders down the movement is only in the neck area if you find that your shoulders start to move yeah then that comes from tightness And switch it up, reverse the direction. Oh, a nice yawn. Is that contagious for you? Mm. Right, so one of my go-tos for the neck is going to be take your hand to your head, head to the hand, and you're pushing the head into the hand, hand into the head. You're going to feel all the muscles along that same side of the spine working and breathing in and breathing out. Close the eyes, soften the jaw. And then let's go ahead and release. And then we're going to go to the other side. Breathe in, breathe out, head into hand, hand into head. Three part breathing diaphragmatic, thoracic, clavicular. And then go ahead and release. You're going to interlace your fingers. Place your hands to your forehead. Then you're going to push your forehead up to the ceiling so you're strengthening the muscles in the back of the neck. But the muscles in the front of the neck are also working and stretching. Preventing you from your head falling off and back. <laughs> Keep pushing the forehead into those hands.
And then let's go ahead and release. Release the hands down. You're gonna go ahead and bring your opposite leg in front. And then go back to moving the head all around. You can choose circles or circle A's. I always find if I'm ever crunchy at the beginning of head circles and then I do this, I always find it's smoother. The neck circles become smoother and I'm able to lengthen a little more. Switch it up, reverse the direction. Breathe. Hmm. Now, we do sit a lot in our culture. So we are going to come into standing position to stretch out your hamstrings. So make sure your toes are pointed forward. Understanding distance, you can create two fists and kind of put your hands right there. So the ball right underneath um, the big toe on the mound. Yeah, put both fists side by side and that kind of gives you an understanding of where your hips are. And then you push yourself up and go ahead and fold here, standing forward. Hold. Ah, tractioning the spine. You can shift the weight here from your heels to your toes. Pushing the sit bones up. Closing the eyes, staying with the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. Deep forward fold, very restorative pose. Good to feed your brain. Tuck the chin into the chest. And then inhale and exhale. Roll up very slowly, rebounding. Belly button stays in. Bring your shoulders up. Roll them back and down. Breathing in. Breathing out, big circles. Inhaling. And exhaling, you're gonna sweep your arms up, grabbing your left wrist, coming into a nice side bend. Toes stay pointed forward, so you can kind of fold here, peek forward, make sure your toes are forward. Hmm. Breathing. Ah. And then let's go to the other side. Inhale and exhale. Breathe in and out. Let's slowly come to center. Bring your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Press the knuckles down, hips move forward. Still decompressing the entire spine. Notice if the arches of the feet are collapsing, lift up through the arches. Make sure you're not locking your knees, that you're lifting up through your pelvic floor and you're bringing that belly button in. And the space between your pubic bone and that belly button is pushing back towards the sacrum and the sacrum is sliding down. And then inhale and exhale, take it back to your fold.
I mean, a second time is always better. Ah, deep fold here. Put the weight now into the balls of the feet. The heels are still on the floor. You're not walking the knees, but I do want you to look for a stretch. In the back of the knee, there's a muscle called the plantaris muscle. And it begins in the back of the knee and it goes down into the bottom of the foot and causes plantar fasciitis. So you're feeling a deep stretch in your hamstrings and your calves, but look for a stretch in the back of your knee without locking the knee. It's pressing down with the ball of the foot, the heel stays down, but pushing down and then lifting your sit bones up to the sky. And then we'll inhale, come up halfway, and then we're gonna actually lower down to our hands and our knees. Hands and knees, I'm gonna move this bolster out of the way. I got two bolsters here, I'm like ah! All right, so here we are, tabletop. We're gonna move in circles here. This is always really nice. You get to get into the waist, you get to move into the shoulders, you get to add cow cats with this movement. You get to see how much do you put in your wrists and not enough in your fingertips. You're gonna go to that right side, circling around. Great for that large intestine. Notice when you push your sit bones up, when you tuck your tailbone under. <laughs> Breathing. Let's go ahead and reverse the direction for a moment. Now, if you find that you have constipation in your life, don't go in this direction. Don't go from left to right. Go only from right to left. Breathing. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sit into our child's pose. You do have the option if you want to, to take your bolster or your foam roller or your cushions that you have and kind of bring the ground up. Rest your forehead on your hands. And you want the thighs and the ascending and descending colon, or ascending and descending colons to be pressing against each other. Hmm. This is also really good for the knees. Why? Because we don't always use the full range of motion of our knees. So this gives us the opportunity to really squeeze the knee like that. <laughs> Notice what you feel here in your gut. Yes, sometimes we might feel bloating or inflammation or pressure. Yeah, you might even feel stuff like, you know, crap in our gut region. So I just want you to think about softening. Ah, and you're in the comfort of your own home. So if you've got to poot or have gas and you need to release it, there you are, in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> ah, because that is all part of life. If you ever eat pizza or pasta, go into this pose. Like, definitely, if it's an evening, the next morning. <laughs> it's so good for the system. Okay. 
We're going to breathe in and breathe out. We're going to come on up. <sighs> Shoulders up, back, and down. So what I'd like for you to do is we're going to go into a nice deep twist. You're going to use the foam roller or the bolster, the pillows, but make sure that it is, it's comfortable for your leg to rest on okay so if it's a roller then use a cushion on top of it or put a blanket on top of it you're actually going to put the bolster or whatever you have you're going to put it over to one side of your body and you're going to kind of scoot away and you're going to roll towards the pillow or whatever you're using and you're going to place the outside leg on it but then you have to think about push, push down with the back of your head and your elbows and then lift your chest up and then turn your chest away from that bolster and then pick your head up and then turn your head. So a nice deep twist. This is the next thing that I want you to pay attention to is the direction of your knee. So that top knee needs to be more looking parallel. If the knee is turned up, then that means that your thigh, you're still in a hip opener in a pose that you should be closing. So you really want the knee to come down to the ground or parallel to the ground. The arms are extended. Mm. That right leg or the bottom leg, the bottom leg that's not on the bolster, you can straighten it as an option or you can bend it. You choose. But for right now, I really want you to feel a nice stretch from your sacrum to your thigh bone. From your sacrum to your thigh bone. And then just close the eyes. Let the body soften here. Mother Earth is catching us. She's supporting us. She's supporting the house that you're on. Yep, or that you're resting in at the moment. She's holding the house up. She's holding you up. You're connected to the earth. Breathing in and breathing out. So the season of autumn is when we're going from yang to yin energy. Yin is winter time, yang is summertime. So we're right in between. And so it's important to take these days in and be like, okay, it's okay for me to rest a little bit more. Yeah, my body is calling for time even if it's five minutes, to just regather myself, to decompress. Five minutes makes a whole world of difference. And then soon you can take like a two minute like siesta. <laughs> but you know, we can take an eight hour like sleep time and not feel rested. A good night's sleep and feeling rested is essential for the body to heal and to allow for new energy to come in. If not, we're just piling stuff on. And that gives a shock to our endocrine system. And it's just like the endocrine system says, I'm so exhausted. So if your body's calling for a sigh, <sighs> you can sigh and then think three part breathing on your inhale
Now, your next exhale, just wiggle your toes for a moment. Tell your top leg, or your top leg and your, your butt cheek, okay, we're going to unwind. But when we unwind, I want you just to swing that leg away from you. So you're just going to swing that leg away from you. Push through your heel, lengthening that waist, and then slowly pressing down with your opposite foot and centering yourself. Straighten both legs and feel the difference. Oh my gosh, I don't feel balanced. Do you feel balanced? I don't feel balanced. If we were to have to like be like, okay, class is up, <laughs> and you got up, we would walk, we would all be walking in circles. <laughs> we're just walking in circles. So let's do the other side. Go ahead and take that bolster or pillow, whatever you're using, put it on the other side. Plant your feet down, scoot your booty away from the bolster, drop your knees, hook your top thigh leg, check the position of your knee, pick your head up, chest up, or head down, chest up, off the floor, Twist your chest in the opposite direction, and then pick your head up, turn your head away from that top leg. Again, if your body's calling to sigh, <sighs> sigh. And then three-part breathing, diaphragmatic, thoracic, clavicular. We're giving our bodies permission to rest in this pose. Allowing our bodies to open up and to liberate ourselves of stresses and worries because there are always going to be more stresses, more worries, more paperwork, more dirty laundry, more dirty dishes, more chores, more errands, more conversations. And again, we don't want to pile them. So taking these breaks. So good for you. So good for the selfness. And you can tell yourself, I deserve this rest because our human bodies don't stop working until we die. They're working when we're sleeping. See if your body is able to soften a little bit more. Are you finding that you're tensing up on that bottom leg, that bottom butt cheek? It's so, ah, sigh. Force the exhale out, and then three-part breathing.
Now we'll breathe in and breathe out. We're gonna wiggle those toes. Remember, we're gonna kick that energy away. So you're gonna slide that top leg away from you and straighten your body. Straighten your body. Observe what you feel here. Go ahead and take your hand to your belly and rub your belly. Rub your abdomen. Go from right to left. If you haven't had you know, food yet, this is just stimulating your digestive juices, allowing stuff to move through you. Apply a little bit of pressure. Notice if you have anything that feels stuck or stuck sticky on the stomach area, yeah, along that ascending or trascending or even descending colon. <sighs> breathing in and breathing out. Okay, so final resting position, legs up. So you're going to use, again, that pillow or that bolster. You're going to slide it underneath you. You'll do a bridge pose, but don't hold your breath when you do that. And you're going to find that place where ah, your legs can just float. Yep. You can bring your arms to cactus position as an option. So you're placing the bolster or your, excuse me, your sacrum underneath. Uh -huh. you're, you're placing your sacrum on top of the bolster and then your legs up to the sky. So if you haven't done that, get those legs up. So good for the lower back. Great for the lymphatic system. Ah. Oh. Great for your parasympathetic nervous system for rest and digest. Enjoying your breathing. In through the nose, out through the nose. Letting the body become soft. Feeling the thought body float away. The emotions disperse.
You're going to begin to wiggle your toes, moving your feet in circles. Allowing the knees to fall into the chest for a moment. Then bringing or pushing the bolster away out from underneath you. And you're imprinting your spine onto the floor. You can place the feet on the bolster and twisting here just from side to side, windshield wiper the legs. Resting over to the right side in a fetal position. Come on up. Pressing yourself up. Easy seated pose. And once you're up, go ahead and Move your shoulders around, get yourself comfortable. You know, we have however many hours of the day that we're awake. And first, don't ever jump out of bed like, yeah. <laughs> if you're late, you're late. Don't worry about it. Don't jump out of bed and you can be like, my yoga teacher said it's all good. Why? Because you're safe, <laughs> right? And it's not a jolt on the system. So we wake up and we have our routines and it might be like, go, 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 go. And then our spirit bodies encounter another body and it's like, oh, we, we don't know, you know, how we feel or not feel on certain times, certain situations and deadlines at work and just chaos and chaos on the streets. And so when we come to our practice, we have this opportunity just to be like, and you can do that. You can use your hands and just be like, like that. And you just let it all go, all go. And you reground yourself. So breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the nose, giving yourself grace. Mm, and love and compassion. And breath. Alright, and sweep your arms up. Inhale and exhale. Bring your hands to your heart center. Taking a great breath in. Letting the breath go. Inhaling. Exhaling and one own. Oh, eat or spear and breathe. Thank you, my body. Thanks for letting us guide you. Peace be with you. Namaste. I hope you have a beautiful day, night, day, night, night. Que lo pasan bien. Bye. Okay.